Okay, uh, my name's Seth Ebert, and I'll be uh, making a persuasive speech today on a topic that's very important to me, and it means an awful lot to me, and I really hope that I don't offend or upset anybody, but in the big realm of things, somebody needs a farmer view on this topic. So everybody knows about PETA and their constant attack on the swine industry in America. Well, I'm here today to talk to you and try to persuade you to see it from the farmer's point of view. Now, every year, PETA tries to attack different states in the nation, trying to get rid of gestation crates, farrowing crates, uh, cruelty to animals is what they call it. Well, I'm here to tell you there's bad people in every industry, and the swine industry has its fair share, but I think it's unfair of PETA to come in and strike down the good producers that do it right and take care of their animals just because of one person. Now, there are several states in the United States that have had already switched their laws into no gestation crates, farrowing crates, and open pen housing. Now, what that is, is if you don't know, a gestation crate is a crate that the sow lives in for 30 days um, right after she's weaned. And what that is used for is to breed her back, get her bred back, help her get her nutrition level, and heal herself back up. Um, farrowing crates, obviously, are where those sows are farrowed or give birth. Um, and what it is is it's a small crate where they can't turn around. They just get up and lay down, um, have a watering system and a feeder in the front. And what this is used and designed for to keep those baby pigs alive. Um, and that's another um, good key fact um, to this strike on PETA is they want to get rid of farrowing crates. But when you look at the national average of death loss with a farrowing crate of baby pigs, it's okay. I mean, we I think we lose, I think I read it was 11% um, of the total live in the United States are lost to getting laid on by their mothers in a farrowing crate. Well, how would America like if over 50 to 60% of the total live born, born each year in the United States were sacrificed because of no farrowing crates used. used. That's where it really hits home with me. He wants to come in and they want to make this initiative of how they need to get rid of farrowing crates. And I just look at them and say you're crazy because not only is it a dumb idea because we've bred the maternal quality out of these sows, they will lay down on their pigs. They will eat their pigs. They will be cruel to their pigs if they have nothing in the way or an obstacle to get around like a farrowing crate. Now, the same thing goes for gestation stalls. Everybody wants to down on a gestation stall because it's just a simple crate that they can't turn around, can't move that far. They can go. They can stand up, lay down, drink water, and eat. Now, I'm going to tell you, 30 days is not that long in one of those gestation crates. And I'm the first person to care about my sows. And that's another good key way to think about this problem is Peter wants to attack farmers and say we misuse things and abuse our livestock. Well, I've got something to tell them. Most farmers, that's their livelihood. Now, if you had to live off of what you were making, wouldn't you do the best job you can? Yeah, that's what I thought, because I feel the same way. You know dang well that we will try our hardest to make sure we have a wholesome and quality product at the end of the, at the, end of the day. And I think that's the biggest thing that irritates me the most with PETA is they don't understand that we do try our hardest. We use the latest inventions and the latest technology, and we keep upgrading, and we keep getting better at what we do. There is 5% less farms each year in the United States. 5% less. There's only 2% of the entire population in the United States that are farm-based. And we're losing 5% of those farms a year. Hog farms. Now, I also raise the question of if we're not doing a good enough job, how can we lose 5% of our total hog farms each year and we still have more pigs per year butchered, produced. That is strictly off of being innovative, using the latest in technology, and doing a very good job at managing. When you can take 
less sows and produce more pigs per year with less number of farms. I think that's awfully impressive. Now, you don't have to agree with me, because I know that everybody has their own views, but coming from an intense hog background myself, I will fight it until the day that it, they overrun us. Here in the state of Ohio, um, we actually had PETA come in, and they wanted to take away farrowing crates and gestation stalls and, and, and really hit our hog industry. Well, thank God for the state of Ohio, um, for the farmers in this state, because what we did was we put together a board of 10 people, 10 farmers, local farmers from around the state that are kind of bigger, bigger commercial guys or, you know, big farmers from all industries, not just the swine, all industries, cattle, sheep, goats, swine, chicken, anything. And what we did when we put those 10 together and anything PETA has to try to do, they have to go through them first. They cannot go straight to the Senate. They cannot go straight to the state government. They cannot go straight to the governor. They have to go through that livestock board before they can even talk to anybody. And I think that is the smartest thing any state in the nation has done yet. Because you look at California and Oregon. They've already banned the use of farrowing crates and gestation stalls. Now in terms of gestation stalls, I think they're an extremely integral point. Um, of production for the commercial guy because if anybody's ever bred sows and had to be a big time pig, pig farmer pen housing is not the way to go when you have 10 to 12 sows per pen and you introduce them right after weaning pigs fight pigs are territorial animals so if they get down into a pen of 11 new pig, 11 new sows they're going to try to fight and they're all going to fight and they're going to get beat up. They're going to get bruised and scratched, potentially broken limbs, things like that. That's my biggest problem with pen housing is when you first introduce. I think it's okay after that other than you get boss sows, skinny sows. The condition of your sow line is just not good enough because we don't have that control on what those sows are eating, drinking, and seeing in front of them without the aid of a gestation crate. Now, I'm just going to leave you with this. And I've said it once already in this speech, and, and I'll say it again. If it was our livelihood, if it's my livelihood to produce pigs for you to eat, do you not think I'd be making a quality product and doing the best I can with the equipment I have? So I strive out and I try to beg for help from you to help us stop PETA or stop or at least educate them about what we do as hog farmers in the United States and how we do the best job we can with what we have. Thank you.